The country western singer Johnny Cash was one of the biggest music stars of the second half of the 20th century. Most people feel like they know the basics of his story. After making it big as a singer, Johnny met June Carter, who was also a singer, and fell madly in love with her. He soon married her, and they spent the rest of their lives making beautiful music together, both personally and professionally, and lived happily ever after. The truth is that Johnny Cash had two wives, June Carter Cash, everybody knows about, but his first wife, Vivian Liberto Cash, is largely unknown. If you watch the movie about his life, I Walk the Line, you would know that he was previously married, but you would probably assume that his first wife was a shrew and a nag and hardly deserves honorable mention in the story of Johnny Cash. But there's a lot more to that story. There are actually some powerful lessons to be learned from Johnny's first marriage. Recently, new accounts of their marriage and their life together have become available that help us to gain a more balanced and accurate view of things and give us some insights into how not to do a marriage. Johnny met Vivian at a roller skating rink when he was in boot camp training for the Air Force. He boldly skated up to her and asked if he could skate with her, and Vivian, thinking him strikingly handsome, agreed. For the next three weeks, they dated constantly. Both quickly fell in love with each other, and it was not a gentle, easygoing kind of love, but a powerful attraction which bordered on obsession. Johnny and Vivian had more than their share of insecurities, and they found the love and affirmation from each other intoxicating. But their time together was short-lived. Within three weeks, Johnny had to ship out to Germany, and Vivian was left back home to finish high school. They wrote constantly, sharing declarations of their love along with whatever was happening in their lives. In fact, they wrote nearly every day, sometimes twice a day. Johnny saved all Vivian's letters, as did Vivian with Johnny's letters. She not only matched him letter for letter, but she kept a journal which included the dates of each letter she received and each one she wrote and posted. In the last days of her life, even after being divorced from Johnny Cash for over 40 years, Vivian still had every one of his letters, all filed in chronological order. When she wrote her book, I Walked the Line, she included many of his letters. In fact, she included so many of his letters, there was very little space for her story. If you look at the Amazon reviews of her book, you find that the number one complaint about that book was the sheer volume of all those letters. Could she not have included 10 or 12 letters and accomplished her purpose? But Vivian seemed almost obsessed with being able to say and prove beyond any doubt Johnny Cash once loved her, and he loved her deeply. In his letters, Johnny writes, You've always got me, Vivian, darling. Wherever I am, I'm yours. No one will ever take your place. In one of her letters, Vivian suggested that they each pray a certain time one day of the week so that they could be joined together through their simultaneous prayers. Johnny replied, Vivian, I think it's a wonderful idea, and I'm so happy, honey, to have you. I love you so, darling. You're so sweet and wonderful and clean. You could never know how happy that made me for you to suggest that. I love you, darling. I love you with all my heart. And over and over throughout his letters, Johnny declared that he would always be true to her. In one letter, he vowed, no one will ever take your place, Viv. That's something you'll never have to worry about, my going out with other women. Marriage is sacred to me, and even though a lot of people take it lightly, I won't be one of them. I'll always belong to you, Viv, and I'm going to make you happy. Anyone who knows anything about Johnny and Vivian's story knows that there was absolutely no part of that statement that proved true. In fact, he did not consider his marriage sacred while he was married to Vivian. He did indeed go out with other women. And rather than making Vivian happy, he injected grief and sadness into her life that she never really got over. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For those three years of enforced absence, while Johnny was in Germany and they were constantly writing letters to each other, Vivian was happy. She saw Johnny Cash as the man of her dreams. Soon they were talking about marriage and he was signing his letters, Your Husband-to-Be. 
Vivian had come from a somewhat dysfunctional family with a mother who was an alcoholic and had managed over her short 17 years to develop a huge inferiority complex. This seems a bit strange since she was physically beautiful. Today, we would call her drop-dead gorgeous. But her looks did not keep her from feeling less than most. She was shy and had a subdued personality, the opposite of the woman who would become Johnny's second wife, June Carter. And given her feelings of inferiority, she was constantly amazed that this tall, strapping, good-looking Air Force man would write her such passionate letters. Reading Johnny's letters to Vivian, you cannot help but be impressed that Johnny really, really loved her, almost to the point of obsession. By the time Johnny Cash came home from Germany, they were both ready to get married and did so within a few months of his return. They began their married life dirt poor. Johnny got a job as a door-to-door -door appliance salesman, but he made very little money and had to borrow advances from his employer for them to be able to live and eat. But Johnny Cash had been doing something else with his time in Germany besides writing letters to Vivian. He had been playing the guitar and writing music, and now he was determined to try to make a splash in the country music world. In the first year of their marriage, he talked a record producer into listening to him sing, accompanied by two of his buddies. The producer, Sam Phillips, was impressed. Johnny's signature deep baritone voice was unique and incredibly magnetic. He determined to produce one of Johnny's songs as a single, but Johnny would need to come up with one other song for the flip side. Johnny went home, sat at the kitchen table, and in about 15 minutes, he wrote out the lyrics and put together the tune for a song he called Cry, Cry, Cry. And that song immediately became a number one hit in the area, and Johnny Cash's musical career was off and running. He truly became an overnight success and was transformed from an unknown appliance salesman to one of the top country music artists over the next year or two. The money started pouring in, and Johnny was able to quit his job and focus exclusively on his music. At first, Johnny and Vivian were elated. This was a success beyond their wildest dreams. They soon moved out of their tiny apartment into a nice house. In those early days, Johnny knew nothing about how to function as a music star, but he soon found out. He was told that in order to promote your music to its uppermost limits, you must tour. You have to travel all around the country and sing in every hall and auditorium where people would come to hear you. And so Johnny began to tour. He was soon associating with other country stars and quickly learned the ways of a successful musician. First, well, it was pretty much a given that you would take drugs, amphetamines to keep you up and alert during the day and to give you confidence and boldness during your evening concerts. Johnny still had some of his small-town shyness about him, but the uppers made him feel like he could lick the world, and he went out on stage brimming with amphetamine-induced confidence. But the amphetamines would keep you up all night, and you could barely sleep unless you overcame them with barbiturates at night to bring you down. Johnny's addictive personality grabbed onto these brightly colored pills like a lifesaver, and his need for them constantly increased. If two could help him, five would be better. Then it was 10 per day and then 20. At his worst, he was taking around 100 pills a day to get high in the days and evenings and to sleep at night. Added to these, he discovered the pleasure of narcotic pain relievers and they were added to the mix. And then there were those female fans. Everywhere he sang, women mobbed him and offered themselves to him. For a man gone weeks or months from his wife without an active relationship with Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit within him, at some point this would become an irresistible temptation, according to his biographers. Vivian could not help but notice the adoring young female fans, and she once asked him if he was tempted by them. He told her that he walked the line for her alone, which, of course, he made into a hit song. In fact, it became one of his greatest hits. But even with Johnny's long absences on tour, the first years of their marriage were happy ones. When he came home, Johnny was a loving, attentive husband, and Vivian was a happy, contented, and adoring wife. She was proud of her husband's success, and she felt blessed to be married to a man who was so incredibly successful and popular. 
And in those first few years, as Vivian bore four baby girls in rapid succession, Johnny's drug habit was in its infancy, and he was a doting husband and a caring father. Being married to Johnny and raising their daughters was incredibly fulfilling for Vivian, even if her husband was home less than half the time. But as the years rolled by, Johnny's touring days lasted longer and longer, and it became evident to Vivian that he was not only using drugs, he was abusing drugs. And when he did come home, he became less and less involved in the life of his family. He frequently retreated to his small home office, closing the door and playing record after record, often staying up all night. When one of his children knocked on the door, he would sometimes answer, what, in a gruff, annoyed voice. Sometimes he would take the car and simply drive all over the area rather than dealing with an increasingly unhappy wife and children who wanted more from him than he was willing to give. Each year, Johnny spent more and more time away from home. The first few years, he kept in close contact with Vivian through letters, postcards, and phone calls. But after a while, those letters and calls became fewer and fewer until, at some point, they became non-existent. There came a time when Vivian did not know where Johnny was or even how long he would be gone. In order to reach her husband, she sometimes had to call others in the music business who knew how to locate him. In his autobiography, Johnny said, By the time we left Memphis in early 1959, we had three daughters and a marriage in bad trouble. Now, I find that astonishing. They were married in 1954. So what this means is that in a little over five years, their marriage was already beginning to unravel and had gone from red hot to lukewarm at best. They would stay married for 13 years before divorcing, but they apparently had maybe five really good years before coldness and alienation set in. In the latter years of their marriage, Johnny was sleeping with June Carter while he was on the road, who now toured with the band. But according to his biographer, Robert Hilburn, he did not limit his romantic quests to June alone. When Cash finally announced he was marrying June, several women who knew him well were shocked. They assumed he would marry them. In the last years of their marriage, Vivian became a very lonely, a very depressed woman. Never knowing for sure when Johnny would come home, she would stand by their picture window at night with the lights out, looking down their long driveway, hoping for his car to come rolling up, smoking cigarette after cigarette and sipping on coffee late into the night. Most nights she was disappointed, but when he finally did make it home, he had little to say to her, and most of their conversations ended up as fights. Most women would never have put up with as much as she did or for as long as she did. But Vivian really loved Johnny Cash, and she admitted at the end of her life that she never stopped loving him at all. For all the abuse and torment he had heaped upon her, she desperately wanted and hoped he would come back to her, and they could somehow recapture the intense love of their early years. It never happened, and finally she filed for divorce but even then, she was hoping this would bring him to his senses and there would be a last-minute miraculous reconciliation. Johnny, however, saw the divorce proceedings as a free pass to marry June and said nothing further to the woman he had once called my darling Viv. Vivian wrote, Everything ended abruptly and Johnny was just gone. We never said goodbye. Once he moved to Nashville, June never allowed us to talk alone. Strangely, in his old age, Cash apologized several times to his daughters for being such an absent father, but never to Vivian, something that troubled her and could have given her at least a little closure and comfort. Now, I haven't shared all this information to make Johnny Cash look bad. After all, this was only a portion of his life, mostly in his wild youth, and he did become a lot more mellow in his later years, although he struggled with pills and drugs off and on, throughout nearly the whole of his life. But there is a moral to this story, a lesson we all need to see, whether you're a famous celebrity or just an ordinary person, little known by anyone outside your immediate circle of friends and family. And the lesson is this. Human love, romantic love, the love that springs up between young men and young women is not nearly strong enough to endure for a lifetime if it is not reinforced with and empowered by 
the love of God. Falling in love? Well, that's easy. Anybody can do that. Christians fall in love, sinners fall in love, atheists fall in love, Bible college students fall in love, and nearly everybody else does. It takes no special skill, no college degree, and requires no training from a textbook. But the love we feel for that man or woman in our early days is human love. There's nothing wrong with it, but it is utterly insufficient to carry us through decades of living and tough times and temptations and challenges. In those early days, we see ourselves as so thoroughly in love that nothing could ever, ever possibly come between us. But of course, things do, and marriages dissolve all the time. Johnny and Vivian were not unique in that. In America, it's estimated that about 50% of marriages end in divorce. But if you add to that those marriages which are unhappy, they don't ever get divorced, but they're not happy, and they involve two people who don't really like each other very much, Well, it seems pretty clear that most marriages are not raging successes. One reason many people give in justifying their divorce is this, we're so different, or perhaps they'll say we grew apart. But being different or becoming different in no way justifies divorce. My parents could hardly have been more different, and yet they were married for 57 years. In fact, most people are drawn to someone because they are, in fact, different. We say opposites attract, and we're not wrong. With Johnny and Vivian, they were certainly different. Vivian loved a simple home and family life with a well-manicured house, strict bedtimes for their girls, and Johnny being strongly involved with both her and their daughters. She did not deny Johnny the privilege of making music, but not at the expense of their family. Family must come before career, and certainly before long, unending tours and drugs and other women. Johnny, on the other hand, loved the road and cheering fans and starting his concerts by saying, hello, I'm Johnny Cash, in his deep, impressive voice. Vivian was a timid soul who instinctively fled from the spotlight, the exact opposite of many of the women Johnny was meeting in the music business who had no problem singing and making jokes before audiences of thousands. Given that Johnny ended up marrying June Carter, who craved attention and applause and had been singing in front of adoring audiences from her youth, Vivian must have seemed like a pretty bland and simple woman by comparison. Rather than having feelings of protectiveness and compassion for his rather fearful wife, he seemed to have come to regard her as an unfitting mate for a world-class singer. Besides June, Johnny had another love which was even more intoxicating. Once he tasted success as a country singer, he fell in love with the lifestyle of such a singer. He fell in love with the screaming fans and bright lights of his concerts. He admired and emulated his boozing and pill-popping fellow musicians, and he reveled in traveling on a large bus from one city to another and putting on concert after concert, singing Ring of Fire and I Walk the Line. Willie Nelson wrote the song On the Road Again, but Johnny Cash lived the lyrics, which say, On the road again, just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends, and I can't wait to get on the road again. All of his life, Johnny Cash spoke reverently of Jesus and Christianity. He had been raised in a Baptist church, and he never left those roots, at least theologically. But for the season of his life he was married to Vivian, he entirely abandoned the Christ of Christianity. The Bible tells men, husbands, love your wives, just the way Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Just as Jesus gave his life for us on the cross, so men are to love their wives sacrificially. Putting the women God has given them above career, above goals and ambitions, and even above their own lives. Had Johnny cut his touring dates in half and spent that time with his family, he could still have had a big career and been a big star and made lots of hit records. Maybe he wouldn't have been quite as big a star as he became, and perhaps he might not have made as much money, but so what? There are more important things than money and fame. We cannot make these kinds of sacrifices on our own. We need the Holy Spirit working powerfully within us, giving us the will, the desire, the want to, to make whatever sacrifices we must make to maintain a happy marriage. The Bible says the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. 
In those tumultuous years, while Johnny Cash was drinking the heady wine of phenomenal success and adulation, there was no pouring out of the Holy Spirit and love in his heart for his wife, Vivian. This poor lady who never really got over him, who stood for hours at her living room window, many lonely nights waiting and hoping that her husband would come home to her in a good mood, never did receive the desire of her heart. And Johnny never seemed to feel any regret for the misery he was creating for his young, adoring wife, the lady to whom he had written just a decade or so earlier, I'll always belong to you, Viv, and I'm going to make you happy. Except at the end. Shortly before Johnny Cash died, Vivian went to see him. She was in the process of writing a book about their life together, and she hoped to get his approval for the project. Johnny graciously told her, I think it's a great idea. If anyone on this planet should write a book about me, it should be you. It's time. Vivian was elated and told her ex, Johnny, that makes me so happy I could just kiss you. Johnny, by this time, nearly blind and near death, his 71-year-old body worn out from years of hard living, drinking, and pill-taking, stretched out his arms and said, well, here I am, and the two embraced in a long hug. It would be the last time they saw each other, and soon everyone in America was hearing that the great country singer had died. Vivian said that had she known how near he was to dying, she would have spent the rest of the afternoon with him and savoring every minute. She writes, I would have told him how special he is and what a good man he is. <laughs> what an amazing lady. What incredible forgiveness and what a lesson to us all.